Hey YouTube, it's Cash. I haven't done a series in a while, so this video will be part of a four or five part series highlighting odd lo-fi tape machines. Everyone that's into this stuff is obviously familiar with tape loops. I was and may still do a series on tape loops, but I feel I see a ton of cassette tape loop videos these days and I always like to show stuff that is a bit more unusual. To ease you into this series, I'll start with something that plays cassettes, but it isn't intended for music. This is a Radio Shack telephone answering machine I found at Goodwill for about $5. I plugged it in and it worked like the first day it was made. It came with a regular cassette, a tape loop cassette for the outgoing message, and a manual. Not a bad deal. Like a cassette player, it has an input, an output, a built-in mic, and a speaker. It has a cable which can be connected to the phone line to record messages, but it also can be used to record phone conversations, so you can pair it with an older style of phone to make lo-fi telephone receiver recordings, but I'm not going in that direction with this video. I'm going to utilize both of these tape heads to make a tape echo. The outgoing message side is meant to play loops, but the incoming message side isn't. It will auto-stop, but the cap stands are in sync and they both spin at the same time even if only one is engaged. When I was a kid, my dad owned a telephone system installation and repair business. He had a full-time tech that repaired all kinds of phone-related devices, including answer machines. The older commercial machines were built like tanks, certainly a lot cooler and more robust than this one. After school, I would hang out with the tech at his bench. I picked up a lot. He did repair machines like this one, but not Radio Shack. You didn't mention that company at my dad's place of business. One thing I remember that both heads in these machines are active as long as one is engaged. I opened this up with high aspirations, but I forgot that they use multiple motors to drive it so a simple speed motor won't work and the tape heads are buried. I'm always weighing reward versus effort, so I buttoned this thing back up and I Dremel cut the front to expose the heads. Then I made a double cassette tape loop to accommodate both cassette positions. I can't stress enough that if you want quality tape loops that will last you, you have to splice your tape at a 45 degree angle using some kind of splicer tool or a block, and you have to use splicing tape. Scotch tape will go bad over time. I use this tool which holds and cuts the magnetic tape. It also trims the splicing tape making a strong clean connection. I could have used this machine to record my loop, but I wanted to drive the tape so I used my Fostex 4-track. I just placed the other cassette on something next to it so it wasn't just hanging off the side. I recorded some tuning forks and some bells. Now I just manually engaged the other tape head to make the delay effect. At some point I will replace this head which is used to read the end of the outgoing message and add another play head with a separate output so I can create another echo layer that I can mix in stereo if I want, but I think this is enough for one video. In this first demo I paired the machine with this bleep drum by bleep labs and I MIDI triggered sculpt by modal electronics with this boss MIDI pad. I also ran the sculpt into this kilobyte pedal by Caroline Guitar Company.
In the second demo, I wanted to do something a bit more random, ambient, and weird, so I paired the machine with this Yamaha PSS-100 with a pre-programmed melody. And I also played this Philips PMC 100. I always use these YouTube videos as an opportunity to experiment. If you want to see the rest of this series, then please like and subscribe. I hope you enjoyed this video, and as always, thanks for watching. Thank <laughs> you.